Hey guys, Technutso here. Back again with another video. I hope you all are doing well. Today let's talk about my experience with the iPad Air 4. This is a long term review as it's been a year already since I bought it. So let's start the video. The variant I have with me is 250GB Wi-Fi only in space grey color. I didn't opt for the cellular version as I mostly use the iPad at home where I have a Wi-Fi connection. I bought the iPad for content consumption and playing games. That's it. I never knew it would be my video editing and productivity machine. The iPad Air 4 250GB was on sale at Rs 60,000 on Amazon last October when it really tempted me to get one for myself. As I placed the order at late night, the delivery was scheduled one day late for which I was mad excited. Here's an unboxing of the iPad Air 4. Please don't mind the unboxing style as I had not shot it for YouTube. It was a basic unboxing which is a must when we order products online. I still feel the same amount of excitement when I see this unboxing. The box contents are the iPad, some paperwork, Type-C to Type-C cable and a 20W USB-C power adapter. Here is a physical overview of the iPad. A 10.9 inch display at the front with a selfie camera at the top. Not a fan of the selfie camera positioning. On the right side are the volume rockers and a magnetic connector to attach and charge the pencil. On the left there is nothing. At the bottom are speakers and a Type-C port for charging and data transfer. On the top are also speakers, a microphone and a power button with Touch ID integrated into it. On the back is a camera, a microphone, an Apple logo in between, iPad branding and a smart connector for Apple's Magic Keyboard. As the body is made up of aluminium, the build should be durable but I don't feel that. I don't know but for some reason I can see a bend in the frame. I can see some kind of bruise in the frame. I use all of my tech gadgets, devices with utmost care and this bend has nothing to do with me. The iPad looks premium though. I really can't believe that this device is built by Apple. The display is so beautiful, I am in love with it. It's a 60Hz refresh rate IPS LCD display with a resolution of 2360 by 1640 pixels. It's a fully laminated display with 500 nits of brightness. The colors are accurate and mesmerizing. I use a glass screen protector and recommend you guys to use it too as it protects the iPad's display from basic wear and tears from our usage. Consuming content on this is a delight to your eyes. I usually watch movies, web series and YouTube on my iPad. And now I can't consume content on small screens like my iPhone. 6.5 inches isn't small for normal people but to me now. This habit is pricey but good for your eyes. The content I watch is mostly in 4K and the iPad has no problem with the playback. The speakers on this are good. I don't usually use the iPad speakers as I have my AirPods or headphones on me. The iPad Air 4 is powered by the Apple A14 Bionic which is the same as the iPhone 12 series. It's a beast when it comes to performance. I edit my YouTube videos on it and the process is a breeze. I use VN and Room of Vision to edit my videos. My footages are 4K60 from my iPhone 11 Pro Max. I face no issues while editing my videos. Throw anything at it and it will smoothly complete your task. As I am a gamer, I enjoy playing games on this. I play BGMI, Clash of Clans, T3 Arena etc on this. BGMI doesn't support 60fps gameplay on high graphics that is above the balance setting which I feel limits the potential of the iPad Air 4. The iPhone 12 Pro supports HDR plus extreme setting. Even my iPhone 11 Pro Max supports 60fps in HDR. I have seen no frame lags or graphic stutters while playing graphic intensive games. The iPad does heat up a little bit but the processor doesn't throttle. No models of iPad have a haptic motor, so no haptic feedback here. I feel future iPads should have haptic feedback as it would enhance user experience. The iPad Air 4 has Wi-Fi 6 which has great internet speeds. I download huge files on my iPad through Safari and the speeds are quite impressive. 
I am very impressed by the charging speed of the iPad. The battery capacity is 7606 mAh or 28.93 Watt hours. A full charge lasts me around 6 to 7 hours approx and 3.5 hours max if I am playing graphic intensive games. I am ok with the battery backup I am getting. Before upgrading to iPad OS 16, my iPad's battery would drain 10 to 12% overnight on standby. Standby as in, no apps running in the background, switched, Wi-Fi switched off from the settings and sleep mode turned on. I reached out to my nearest Apple Authority service center and they refused to take action on this. They say that this is normal as there are many processes running in the background. They also say that the same battery drain is also common on iPhones which I personally haven't faced. 1-2% to overnight battery drain still can be understood but 10-12% to in a single night can't. The rear camera on the iPad Air is a 12 megapixel wide sensor. It can record videos in 4K at 60fps which is great. Usually cameras on the iPad are not used for photography but rather for just face time and scanning documents. But still I have attached some photos from my iPad side by side with my iPhone 11 Pro Max. Have a look. Using an iPad is very fun, with the swipe gesture, the multitasking features etc. Transferring files via USB-C, downloading and managing files on the iPad. The Files app has made the iPad a versatile device. Consuming content on the big screen with no distractions like we have when we use an iPhone. The Touch ID sensor could have been better. Unlocking my iPad Air 4 has rarely been a smooth process. It always fails on the first attempt. You have to place your finger very precisely or you should have a small finger. Apple could have implemented a face ID instead of the touch ID. I use a magnetic flip cover which is not from Apple. The quality is good and works well with the system. As I said it's been a year already and I haven't felt the need to buy either the pencil or the Apple's magic keyboard or any other keyboard for my iPad. I don't do artistic work like drawing or sketching nor do a script on my iPad. I already have a Windows laptop which I use for scripting my videos and other laptop stuff. I download huge files and transfer them to storage drives. I back up my important files from my iPhone and iPad. I use Adobe Premiere Pro and Photoshop. I also use Microsoft Office for daily activities. This is some stuff which I cannot do without my laptop. Having an iPad isn't going to replace my laptop, at least for me. The iPad OS has limitations and it's not a desktop OS to be precise. If your sole purpose is drawing, sketching and note taking with the Apple Pencil, you can go for an iPad. But buying an Apple Magic Keyboard with the iPad is not really worth it and it cannot replace your desktop or laptop. At the price of the iPad and the Magic Keyboard, you would easily get a good laptop. Laptops might feel bulky but their structural integrity is far better than an iPad. You can travel with it without the fear of it getting bent and broken. So here I end my video. This was my perspective on the iPad Air 4. Drop your queries in the comments below and the relevant ones will be answered. See you guys in the next one, Tech Nutso signing off.